Hello and welcome to Chapter 5. This is Engaging the Online Learner from the book Essentials of Online Course Design and brought to you by Group 2, Nicole Brown, Erica Bustos, Katie Capps, Catherine Clark, and Tiffany Summers. And here are a couple of worthy quotes taken from Aristotle and Henry David Thoreau. It's important to acknowledge that online learning can maybe be an isolating experience, yes? Uh, it's important for the instructor to do everything in their power to create an online environment that is welcoming and engaging. So think of three components. First of all is presentation. The instructor should make sure that the material is engaging, inviting, and clear to read. Activities, is the material hands-on? Learners should be active participants in their own learning process. And assessment, has the instructor provided ample opportunities for the students to receive feedback on their learning? Also, uh, the instructor will want to have material that is authentic and meaningful. Students should see a real-world application when possible and always should draw on their prior knowledge. The instructor should provide ample opportunities for collaboration. Students need that peer-to-peer -peer connection with others. And while there are many intrapersonal learners, it doesn't necessarily mean that they learn and retain information in total isolation. The instructor should provide opportunities for students to reflect on their learning and self-assess. And finally, they should be responsive to all types of learners in the class, much as an instructor would in a face-to-face -face setting. So what is the role of a learner in an engaged learning process? Learners should be active participants and construct their own understanding. Hopefully, they will be interacting with the material in real-world situations. They will also help their peers to construct knowledge as well. In a group, they will have the opportunity to work with a variety of people from other backgrounds and learn beyond themselves and their subjective views of the world. Ideally, groups will have changing roles, which will add to this challenge. Pairs can be more productive than group work. But there is still that opportunity to reinforce one another's learning in terms of working solo. Now this is crucial for the interpersonal learners who need to be alone to reflect and create. On the other hand, they will also need time to learn to collaborate successfully in order to prepare them for the real world beyond their studies. And this also includes interpersonal learners as well. They not only need time to do what they do best, collaborate with others, they also need time to practice working solo. Collaboration is what keeps the community active and engaged. It is learner-centered and it reflects real-world working conditions. Heterogeneous groups are groups of differing abilities, interests, or learning styles. Homogeneous groups are grouped by similarities. Jigsaw groups are much of the time grouped randomly and then they return to their home group to share findings with one another and to teach one another. By varying the types of groupings, an instructor provides ample opportunities for growth within the class. Each type of grouping is appropriate for some type of material that you're teaching. And finally, Preparing for collaboration, that takes a bit of legwork. Overall, the instructor should do his best to create an atmosphere that is safe and supportive, to provide guidelines and expectations ahead of time, to organize individual responsibilities, and to have learners assess one another. Grouping should be clear and roles within the groupings should be clear and well thought out ahead of time. And that is Chapter 5, Engaging the Online Learner.